And as this is the Word of God, would you please rise as I read it? 1 Timothy chapter 6. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. 2 Corinthians 9, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Father, we come again now to rejoice in your goodness to us, and we do pray that we would be teachable, that you'd be glorified as our hearts seek after you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. So the Eighth Commandment we are thinking about, the Eighth Commandment requires the lawful, it says the lawful procuring, you know, gaining, get, getting, and furthering the wealth of our, the wealth and outward estate of ourselves and of others. And it forbids what unjustly hinders our own or our neighbor's wealth or outward estate. So the Eighth Commandment requires that and forbids that. So some duties required, I believe. Just, here's just a few thoughts on the Eighth Commandment here. A few duties required. Truthfulness in doing business. Restitution, if we have obtained things wrongfully. Moderation toward worldly goods. Frugality, not wastefulness. Being against frivolous lawsuits to gain money. Preserving and furthering the wealth of others and ourselves for the glory of God and his service. So preserving. And then giving and lending freely. And this is where I'd like to focus mostly, given the verses that we read, I'd like to focus a little more on the, this aspect of giving freely. Matthew 10, verse 8 says, Freely you have received, freely you give. So in this passage, Jesus gave uh, his power to his disciples to go out and to heal and to share the good news. And as he also freely gave salvation to us here, we are to give, uh, even materially sometimes, and always we are to give the good news. We're always to be giving and sharing the gospel. Romans 8.32 says, He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He did. God gave up, he delivered up his own son. And he continually, freely gives us all things by his grace. All things that pertain to life and godliness. He is our example on giving freely. James 1.5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach. That is how God gives and how we should give. Our God gives liberally without reproach. He didn't withhold his only son. And he gives without reproach. He doesn't withhold when we ask according to his will. Our God is a giving God. And we are to be imitators of our Lord. Ephesians 4.28, which we just read, I believe, last week. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. One reason we work is to give to those in need. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And the antidote to covetousness really is a giving heart like that. 1 John 3.17 says, Whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? People who steal are usually not generous people. But Christians have the ultimate example of giving, as we've already seen. We can see the grace of of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is our standard. Our Lord Jesus gave himself as a ransom for all his own. God gave his only son, and we are to give sacrificially because of his example, and by his power also. So we here have the world's goods, I believe, in abundance. And we should not shut up our hearts 
or cling to possessions as our security. Our possessions should not possess us. And if we can't give to those in need, the verse asks basically, how does the love of God abide in us? God gave freely to us, and we are to freely give. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. So one reason we are to procure and to further the wealth and the outward estate of ourselves and others is to be able to give, to give more and more as the Lord gave to us, to be an example uh, of how much he has given to us, to exalt the Lord who gives so graciously. So let's not steal by being poor givers and by using, but we should use all that the Lord gives us and to give what he asks to bless and encourage and serve others. Our Lord Jesus gave himself that we might come to him. He left the wealth of heaven to give himself for our salvation, and he gave his life to free us from death. Praise God. Second Corinthians verse eight, uh, chapter eight, verse nine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. We are rich. And in this communion, we see clearly how rich we are, how much he gave. He gave the ultimate. He gave his life. His body was broken. His blood was shed. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. A good shepherd will give his life for the sheep. And that is what we are remembering here. Let's pray. Lord, as our shepherd, you did give your life for us. And you redeemed us by your blood. Lord, you gave your life. You bore our sins in your body on the cross that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Oh Lord, may we see the gospel so clearly that we too would have great joy in giving. We'd be a very giving people. Lord, we praise you for your sacrifice for us and for your example to us. And we thank you for your uh, great and many blessings which enable us to give. Lord, you're the giver of every good and perfect gift. And we worship you and, and we partake now of this communion with you in joy in the name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen.